Hi, I'm Jim Gordon. <laughs> I'm Lita Lipa. And welcome to another edition of Our City Tonight. We're sitting on the lovely patio of Italian Kitchen and right in the downtown area of Vancouver. Yeah, we have not, Lita, we have not filmed here since opening night, which, if I'm not mistaken, was in late 2017. We're happy to be back. We've done yes. a number of the uh, global group restaurants over the years, but we haven't been here, as I said, in quite some time, so we're excited to be back. Yeah, we certainly are, and uh, so much to film here. There is. We uh, are going to check out some great food, of course, some cocktails, and we're going to talk to a few very talented people. All that coming up next. as I mean, Jim and myself. Uh, Italian Kitchen has an amazing cocktail program. Uh, you make all the classics, but you've also got some really wonderful modern takes on some of the great cocktails. But we're gonna start with this one, my favorite. Absolutely, tell Absolutely. us about that. Absolutely, this is just a classic Aperol Spritz. Uh, we decided to make it and follow the original uh, traditional recipe to prepare it. So we just use classic Aperol, a nice Prosecco as well coming from Venice, and then just a little bit of soda water. Uh, that's honestly a classic that we don't want to play with it too much. There are some stuff that in Italy we don't want to play with. So we just want to keep it as it is. Um, and yeah, it's nice and refreshing and it's can perfect. Be wrong. It's perfect. I've come for so many of these during your happy hour, and uh, it is actually perfectly done. So Thank don't you. change a thing. Oh, we will not. <laughs> um, the next one. This is a rosemary sbagliato. Uh, it is a variation of a classic Negroni. Um, so we want to make it a little bit lighter and give a little bit of a touch modern. So pretty much we are just changing the gin to a Prosecco to make it nice and fresher and a little bit lighter as well. Mm -hmm. And we add a little bit of rosemary, both some syrup that we prepare homemade here uh, at Italian Kitchen and also a little bit of rosemary smoke on top. Uh, and you know, my grandma always used to say that rosemary sticks with everything. So we just try to put in cocktail and it works it works definitely it works and it's very uh, very beautiful drink last but certainly um Yes, tell us about this one. What's so this uh, is what we call the Nord War fashion. Um, so of course it's a, a old fashion, but with a touch of old world in it. Uh, we use instead of the brown syrup, we do add some Averna uh, Amaro, which is uh, um, an aperitif, a nice and herby aperitif typical from Sicily, in particular the Averna, which come from Caltanissetta, which is a couple of kilometers far away from my mother um, as born. So that's why we decide to use that to give a little bit of that herby feeling, a little bit of sweetness there to kind of balance it up with our double smoked uh, bourbon. Wonderful. And Sicily is where you're from and your family is from. That is right. Yes. Yeah, so it's not you're bringing a little piece of yourself. That's here. correct. Uh, yes. <laughs> That's a wonderful drink and very theatrical, oh, as you can see. Thank you so much. Um, let's talk about you have an extensive wine list you always have here at Italian Kitchen. Tell us a little bit about what you have beside oh, us. Yeah. and extensively. Absolutely. We do have a quite massive uh, wine list here at Italian Kitchen. We try to go from north to south and try to highlight all the best that we have in Italy. Um, of course, most of the wines that people are, are um, used to here are mostly like Brunello di Montalcino or Barolo and those kinds of wines. We want to highlight the hidden gem that we have in Italy, uh, like wine from the south. Like for example, here we have the Etna Rosso, which has a special place in my heart because uh, it comes from Sicily, of course. Uh, and then we have a Tignanello, which comes from Tuscany. And then we go up to the north to Veneto um, so that we can have all the kind of wines that are perfect to be paired with the food that Chef Matteo usually prepares for us. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Chef Matteo, a um, little bit later on in the show, we're gonna see what he's cooking for us. Absolutely. And pair some wine. Let's do it. Thanks, Giorgio. No problem. You're looking at the uh, new single, the video, from uh, singer-songwriter Jamie Hamilton. The song is called Stop and Ground, and Jamie joins us from Victoria, British Columbia, uh, just across the street. Jamie, welcome to our city tonight. 
Thank you so much for having me. Uh, great to have you here, and congratulations on the new single. Uh, let's talk about the inspiration behind the single. We'll get to your career, but first the single. Obviously, I'm reading about uh, inspired by your family's summer cabin. Who doesn't want one of those? And, of course, your love of country music. Yes, absolutely. So my first, uh, my inspiration for Stomping Ground came obviously from my family's lake cabin in uh, Victoria, BC. There's a lake called Cowichan Lake. So for as long as I can remember, my family and I, we went up there every summer and I have the fondest memories up there. So I always had this idea that I wanted to write about that. And back in 2017, I brought this idea of my stomping ground to my co-writer, Scotty Hills. And we wrote this tune and I've had it in my back pocket for a couple years. And this summer, it just felt right to release it. And uh, I also released a music video with it. And I'm just so happy with it all. I should mention Scotty Hill, uh, Juno nominated Scotty Hill, we should say. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, your story is, is, I mean, challenges hit everybody's life. Uh, I first heard of you about your journey that you have been on. Uh, a three-time cancer survivor who begins, you begin your career thanks to uh, the folks at Children's Wish BC. Uh, your wish was to record music and you haven't looked back yet. Talk about that period of your life because uh, it, it, traumatic, obviously, but you turned that into a positive and, and let music come and be a part of your life. Absolutely. So like you say, I am a three-time cancer survivor. By the age of five, I was diagnosed with leukemia. And by the age of nine, I relapsed. And then again, at the age of 12. And at the age of 12, I had a bone marrow transplant. And yesterday, my family and I, we actually just celebrated 11 years cancer-free. So it's uh, it's been a big one. Um, but obviously, the past... Uh, kind of decade of my life. I've been uh, feeling the best that I have. And I've always turned to music, you know? When I was younger, I was really involved with sports. I love going to school, obviously hanging out with friends and uh, going through chemo and in hospital, I had to give up a lot of that. And uh, the one thing that was always there for me was uh, my guitar and music. So through that, I really turned to it. It really became my healing outlet you know, singing and songwriting shortly followed. And uh, I think it's just, I've just built such a passion for it. And it's something that I've always wanted to do. And um, I am uh, just have plans to try to do it full time and uh, I'm loving every minute of it. And it's good that you also give back. Obviously it touched you deeply uh, performing in concerts like the, the uh, BC Cancer Foundation fundraiser, which is great. And also you spent a little time in uh, Nashville, which must have been exciting for a young singer songwriter in the country music scene. Yes, absolutely. So my first time there was last summer. I went with my family and then I went again this year in May and I went with a fellow artist friend. Her name is Emily Kate and uh, we spent a week there and it was awesome. We had some song rights booked. We played a songwriter circle and we got to meet so many amazing artists and there's actually quite a bit of Canadian artists down there. So it was really cool to kind of, you know, meet these other artists and uh, we almost felt at home. So I'm already planning a trip to go back next year. Um, let's let's just talk briefly one more time about some of the stuff that you've got going. I mean, uh, people can find out more about you at jamiehamilton.com. Uh, give us a little more uh, insight into uh, music and videos and where they can find all your stuff. Yeah, you bet. So like you say, at Jamie Hamilton. Dot com. That is my website, but I'm also on Instagram. I have a Facebook page called Jamie Hamilton Music, and then I'm on TikTok and all that. So and most of my usernames are just Jamie Hamilton. That's wonderful. And uh, check out our new single, which we kicked off this segment with, uh, Stomping Ground. Uh, Jamie, thank you for joining us. I know you're, you're feeling a little under the weather, so we appreciate you joining us uh, via Zoom from, uh, from uh, Victoria. And we also want to thank uh, Jasper at uh, Nova Current PR because our show really relies on people like him to get people like oh, you on our show. So Jamie Hamilton, yeah, thank you for joining perfect. us and continued success moving forward. Thank you so much.
sponsorship and other promotional considerations provided by Bosa Foods, authentic Italian, with two locations to serve you better. More information, go to bosafoods.com. Well, here at Italian Kitchen on their lovely patio, just a little reminder to check out our regular features and video interviews in the Richmond Sentinel. You can find these in print and online at their website, richmondsentinel.ca. Earlier this week, Jim sat down here at Italian Kitchen with an amazing and popular UK comedian and TV host, Jim. Thank you, Lita. He's a very popular TV host. He's a stand-up comedian, author, journalist, and he's just wrapped up a very successful tour here in Canada. It ended uh, just last night here in Vancouver. The tour is called, So Where Were We? And he is joining us here at the table. It is a great pleasure to welcome Dar O'Brien, who put on a great show. Let's, sir, thank you so much. An absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, the, uh, a pleasure to see your show last night, sir. It had me laughing, uh, crying at times, yeah. angry at other times at some of your stories. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting one because, because you know you never want to say what the show's about because people go, in every, you go, oh, do I want to go see this? But once they have you in the room, yeah. then you can do what, and you can bring you as it was. What I call the long story, there's a long story about, Adoption, and I never go to the specific outside of the room, yeah. but in the, and then I can bring you on the whole thing. And yes, it does get sad, and then it gets, and then that's a beautiful tension. We've made the audience sad, it's very easy to make oh, them happy you, again. You did that. I'm going to talk to you about the uh, the second part of your act. Um, I want to ask you something, though. It's kind of simple, but I'm really curious because you alluded last night to different reactions from different audiences around yeah. the world, and I'm curious as because you literally went from Newfoundland to here. Yes. Are the audiences all laughing at the same thing, or you find nuances or difference? The difference only place I, I, that I find slightly different uh, is when you go to the middle, bar, uh, Edmonton and Calgary, mm -hmm. uh, slightly different. And it may simply be that there are fewer expats there. And so when you play Toronto or you play Vancouver, you'll have, you know, not the, the, the most of it, but there'll be a chunk of Irish and a chunk of British. Yeah. Uh, and that'll add a certain different energy to it. The uh, And then when you go into Calgary, Far fewer of those people there, the, and it's just Canadians, and it's 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 more interesting somewhere for me because I do a lot of gigs at yeah, home. Yeah. So, uh, so it's really, but that's the only time it feels slightly culturally different. I don't. You're not as pronouncedly coastal as uh, America would be uh, in that regard. I could see that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one of the things I really enjoy about uh, your work that you did on Mark the Week, you're clearly a very very funny, witty man, and I love the fact that you you let. I call them the inmates, and you're clearly the guy that's piloting that ship. But but you you don't you don't feel a need to get in the way of what these guys are doing. You're there to run the thing and get it from A to B. But but you're clearly confident and secure enough. I if you'll yeah, I mean, some compliments your way. That, that's absolutely. I mean, you were a perfect host obviously. because of that. I think one of the reasons. Firstly, as an Irish person, I'm finding the compliments really difficult to handle. Uh, I, I'm, I'm recoiling here from this. Some Irish friends on camera. Yeah, yeah, we are, we're not in fear. We don't do compliments. We're not raised in compliments. <laughs> okay. We don't have. We, we have never. Done the social mechanism to handle compliments. I apologize. No more compliments. Um, I was like, really? Yeah. I mean, like, yes, fine, yeah, kind of. Uh, uh, but the the job on that is there are six other comics speaking, and I know hosts who've done this as their own vehicle. Right. And I've been the guest on that show, and I've actually been in shows where the host didn't say a word to you either before or, or during the show, and then afterwards might dying to deign to say a word to you afterwards. And I thought that was a terrible way to do it. Yeah. So I was always very support, 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 and also what I quite like doing is listen to what they say and reacting. That was always a fun game for me, right. which was, okay, that's a good idea. Let's roll with that and see where we can, and how big can we make this? Right. Because you saw on the show we did last night, I am looking for silly things oh. to build a, like a, a, an opera out yeah, of, essentially. Yeah, certainly. The, uh, and then at the end, I'll draw that ball back in again and, and, and have a big, and, and, and even if when I showed, do the live shows, the final applause goes to that person I spoke to, then that person yeah. I spoke to, and then let's not forget the things that happened, blah, blah, and that's because of that. And I get them a round of applause, yeah. and then then I say goodnight. Okay. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning, and you mentioned it too, the second part of your show after we had taken a break and everyone went to the bar, uh, long lineup as you alluded to, uh, the second part of your show is very different because you talk about something that's very dear to your heart and very uh, emotional, and that is searching for your birth mother. Yes. And I think I speak for everybody. Our producer, uh, Neil, was with me last night. We have some friends here that saw the show. I laughed, I cried, I got angry at the way a system used to be yeah. in a particular woman who we won't mention. Yes. But it does have a great ending, but 
what was this always something you wanted to include in your your live no, show? Were you hesitant? Yeah, it was actually. I mean, because normally I, I I would probably not give that much of myself because I can make up stuff. So I feel that that's a, and in some ways, if you're too honest, it gets in the way of you being able to, you know, invent an imaginary child for a joke that would be <laughs> handy in that moment, like whatever, yeah, yeah. or you know, give your wife a totally different job or whatever. The just for the moments that you need it. But the uh, but then I got presented with this thing because just as it turns out, I think in 2017, 2019, I decided I should look this up, I should do something about it, and I uncovered a story. And when you're just given a story, mm -hmm. a story that is that touches on something that's a huge thing in Ireland at the moment. Ireland at the moment, possibly, and I haven't looked exactly, so I'm not sure how parallel it is, the situation in Canada. And there was a lot of, there were a lot of institutions that we made, have a, yeah, we have a yeah. version actually. Yeah. yeah. And so in Ireland, we're working through that at the moment, from Magna Laundries and mother and baby homes. And so I found myself just at the point where a campaign was peaking right. in order to liberate the access to information for adopted people because it was shocking. You couldn't, you couldn't get your birth cert, you couldn't get... There was a point 20 years ago where there was a law was proposed to make it a criminal offence for an adopted person to seek out... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's um, how, how... And that campaign, people campaigned against that and carried on campaigning to the point now where it's all opened out hugely. Yeah. But it was, it was astonishing. Ireland likes its secrets. Uh, I mean, I've been putting it mildly. That's, that's it's a, a good nasty understatement, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> isn't that like really? But, is. you, but it's a great ending too because you did find your, your your birth mother, and it's wonderful because as you said on stage last night, lovingly, you have a whole new family. Yeah, it, I mean, you're married, it, you've got kids, you're dealing with that, but also you yeah. have a whole new family. I so. mean, and it is a thing that that, that adopted people and people have done the search will know that there is a tremendous initial flurry uh, of activity and interest. It's the most exciting thing you've, you've done. And then the, the interesting point is now of going, well, how do I establish and continue a relationship and what do I get from this? And will I, you know, because you, you have, I have parents. Yeah. And then this, there's a woman who, who, who I know and I, I convert her regularly, obviously, they there to replace that. But then you get siblings, and really the siblings siblings are actually probably the thing that you end up in more in contact with. That's wonderful. Yeah, and so it's a, they are an addition to your life. It is, it's been a very positive thing. It was a, it was a spectacular show, and I, I, I want to mention to our viewers, um, you are very active on social media. Uh, you have a YouTube channel. You yeah. have uh, uh, dotobrien.com. You can find it, and as I said, check out this guy's stuff. Of course, Mock of the Week, thanks to BritBox, uh, who we work with. Uh, they've got your show. I mean, it is, it is always a pleasure to do it to an interview that has no promotional value whatsoever. That occurs at the end of the tour when you're not due to be back in the country for a couple of years. Uh, it's great to, to uh, raise my profile to the point where people can now safely forget about being handled. We, we for don't a do things of years. easy for our interview guests. Uh, that could have been a lot better for you to do this two months ago. But no, 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 no. no, 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 no honestly, you're, 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 like I have a guidebook, and you're one of the things I have to do. Uh, I have to come on this show. I have to do a seaplane. Uh, I have to do the ferry to Victoria. I, 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 this or see a whale. They were the choices. Well, I thought you said you saw a lot of whales in Victoria. Um, yeah, yeah okay, that, know, was, that's, that's, that was very hard to explain. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> that got very, very... Got cornered on the street, actually, yeah, by someone did, threatening yeah, like, to show you whales and yeah. other stuff that you got to see the show. And we have kids watching this, this episode. So, hey, I appreciate you taking some time to see us here at Italian Kitchen. Pleasure. Thank you, sir, and uh, continued success. And, and come back again. I absolutely will. It's honestly been... Uh, it, it's all the way across, but particularly you get to the city, you know, and also Toronto. They uh, have both been wonderful. It's good and to like, hear. As good as, as good a couple of gigs, because I've done this show 153 times now. Oh, and the wow. show, the, the first show, the, 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 the Vancouver show was absolutely one of the best. Absolutely one of the most enjoyable shows I've done. An absolute pleasure. And before we go, because I wanted this on camera, are you sure I can't buy you a pint? Absolutely, because this is filmed at, it's like 11 in the morning. And while I, do, I don't live up to any cliches here. <laughs> Okay. Sure. All right. Very true professional, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir. That's a Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks. Well, I have joined uh, the team. We're in the <laughs> upper dining room here at uh, Italian Kitchen. And oh my goodness, let's go to this master camera. Oh boy, oh boy, look at the food, <laughs> Lita. Uh, uh, wow, artwork <laughs> by Matteo. Yeah. Executive chef, chef here, yeah. yeah oh my goodness, this looks so good. And we will sample on camera because we know you viewers always say, you don't eat enough on camera. <laughs> Do they? <laughs> well, the viewers I talk to. Yeah. Matteo, let's get into this food. Yeah, oh my please. goodness. Well, I'll just uh, let's. Uh, talk about our concept like obviously here just we, we do a lot of sharing but uh, first of all we're Italians right so the concept that I'm trying to to have here at the Italian kitchen is just using fresh seasonal seasonal items that we 
pair with our fresh made pasta. So mm. you have a great example here with the cacio e pepe, the fresh lobster that is flew in daily from, uh, from overseas, like, wow. uh, from the other side of Canada. And now we are do our fresh linguine. We have some beautiful fresh shuffle that is coming from Italy. And then uh, moving on to a uh, simple sorry, can I just ask a question though? Yes, I mean, of course. preparation you can do table side, right? Yes, exactly. So we do this in uh, one of our Parmesan wheels, the Parmigiano Reggiano. And people can choose it to have it uh, table side. They can also choose it gluten free if it's an allergy or not. We can always work around that one as well, right? Wonderful. I know that Lita was yes, mentioning about gluten free. Yeah. So yeah. The risottos or some of the other items. That's uh, one of the major things with. Uh, with flour and pastas nowadays, so that we can definitely work around those. And they taste delicious. It's not like, oh, I'm getting a secondary dish. Oh, it's a, it's a, we're choosing a good grade of uh, quality for even our gluten-free pastas. Wonderful. But um, again, so we're playing with seasonal, seasonal uh, ingredients, and uh, coming up at the end of the month, we also have another beautiful menu that we're doing a specialty. So we have one of the dishes there, but we are going to have uh, some mushrooms that we're going to toss in a pecorino wheel. So we have which, a, which you have behind wheel. you here, obviously. Yes. Yeah, so we, have a, oh. we have some white truffles, black truffles. We have seasonal uh, mushrooms, uh, mm -hmm. local and imported. We have different kinds of chanterelles, lobster oh. mushrooms, cauliflower oh, mushrooms. Wow. <laughs> the, the, you name it, we'll have it. Just uh, and that's a, that's only for the month of October, because uh, we just drive here with myself and my team. We just uh, we want to bring in whatever we can have our hands on and play play with the food. Right. So, okay. so it's, you're, not, it's not just eating time. Your, your regular customers will never be bored with your menu, but you always offer them what you regularly come exactly. out, like your big so, dish there. Yeah, so on top of our menu, we always have special specials that we want to, we want to showcase our skills on making the pastas, the ravioli, like example. This, this. we watched you do this earlier, which yeah, was so just a, a work of art again. That's an ideal raviolo, so we have some, uh, and uh, we're serving on top of our tenderloin, so when you have your steak, you can cut through the raviolo and the yolk will base your steak and you can enjoy it with a, with a yeah, it's, of Yeah, it was just watching you and was it Mika that your assistant was helping you over there? Yes. It was just amazing yes. to watch you guys uh, create this beautiful Wonderful. culinary art, yeah. Well, as Matteo talks about one of their standards, their signature dishes, I am going to taste the risotto. Oh, okay, Because yes. as our viewers have asked that we don't taste enough <laughs> on the show, I know we went away from that, but it's because we had to ask questions. Oh. <laughs> okay, I think, I think this is arguably oh one of the best, most signature dishes you guys have here. It's all about sharing yes. with this so, plate. Mm -hmm. That's uh, exactly yeah. our concept, which is uh, for, for people to, to be able to come here and share. Like it's uh, the family style. They tell, yeah. they, or even just for, for myself, just to, whenever we do tastings, it's, uh, it's always promoting the family style. So it feels a little more comfy. Right. And like a little more warmed to the dish. And uh, wow. we put together some of our specials that's, uh, this is a uh, platter that I'm quite happy with it. So we have some penne arrabbiata mm -hmm. with some guanciale, some burrata. Oh. And then we have our tr signature truffle spaghetti and meatballs. So we have oh. truffle cream, house-made meatballs with tomato fondue. And then uh, the black linguine that we that we made earlier. We say, we yes. We just uh, make a beautiful seafood. So we have some jumbo prawns, Alaska pan seared jumbo scallops. Mm -hmm. There's some clams and then it's finishing in a tomato, spicy tomato sauce and lobster bisques. So, Nice, rich flavors. They will complement each other and just give you a, a little bit of an overlook of what we do in the in our Chef restaurant. Mateo, this is like an <laughs> art gallery sitting in front of us. Your your art pieces here, they're absolutely beautiful. Hey, that's, uh, well, you see the food here. Come check it out. We're going to uh, head back to the patio and wrap the show up where we began. We're going to talk to our good friend uh, Omar, who's the GM. After you watch this. Closed captioning and other promotional considerations provided by Hamilton High Street Senior Residence, Richmond's newest senior living community. Well, back out here on the lovely patio at Italian Kitchen where we began the show, joined by our good friend Omar, who is the big shot here. We call him the GM. The big shot. Well, also, I got to say, always dresses well and let me a tie yeah. today. Yeah, I can't oh, believe wow. Jim wasn't wearing a tie today. I well, you came to the rescue. I couldn't have Jim today with no tie. And thank know. you. Oh, like, brilliant. People watch the show know I sleep in a tie, but thank you very much, pal, for uh, letting me win. Hey, uh, we're going to talk about what's in front of us in a few seconds, but yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. let's, let's talk about this restaurant and everything we've seen today and, and for people that have 
not been here before, part of the global group. Yes. Uh, tell us about what they can experience here. Well, what they can experience here is uh, basically a huge Italian variety of food that um, we cater all the way from the north to the south. Uh, we're very lucky that our executive chef, Matteo, he's a true Italian, Yeah. Uh, which uh, you guys met already and more than, a, more than once. Um, also our bar manager, um, the guy in charge of the wine program, Giorgio, another true Italian. I'm the immigrant here, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm very, I'm very glad that we have them both because they bring their knowledge, their culture, their passion, food, wines, cocktails, all together, and we create a great blend. Huge variety of food, huge variety of uh, cocktails. Um, we have a massive uh, wine uh, cellar. Um, our wine menu, it's also quite spread, covers pretty much every single area of Italy. Um, so, but with that being said, what we like to work on, it's uh, we try to work on uh, simple ingredients, fresh, to create classic Italian dishes. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm pretty sure everyone talk about it here, but our main concept is the art of sharing. Um, mm -hmm. We love people in long tables, Italian style, ordering um, a bunch of dishes, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. appetizers, antipasto platters, salads, risottos, pastas, mm -hmm. all on the table. Um, and then um, everybody, everybody shares, you know, from there we all dish out of the big platter. And we oh, should yes. say, uh, as we've been saying throughout the, our time here, uh, a lot of stuff is done by the table, including yes. this. Oh. Uh, you had one of your guys come over and, and put this tiramisu together, which yes. I'm gonna just dig in while you tell something. You, you dig in it, please. <laughs> Be my guest. Oh. I am gonna try the cream because I could not believe how beautiful this oh looks. Oh my God! You died and gone to heaven, Jack. Mm. Oh, so that is our table side tiramisu. Um, wow. I guess well, you saw our pastry chef rush. Right. Um, is well our mm. um, dessert table side uh, dish. Beautiful. Wonderful. Hey, we've had a great time here. Thanks, uh, of course, it's the place we like to hang out at, so it's wonderful to come and film the place we spend a lot of time in. Uh -huh. uh, Omar and Matteo and Giorgio, and of course, the rest of the staff for helping us out. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Everybody is welcome over here. Yeah, come oh, check it out. Wonderful. Boy, great location right at Robson and Burrard. You can hear the busy street life uh, <laughs> behind us. I'm Jim Gordon. And I'm Lita Leepens. We'll see you on the next edition of Our City Tonight. I'm Jeez. having more, right, actually. Oh, yes, I'm going to eat. Cheers, so everyone. Much, uh, oh. <laughs> Don't forget to check out past episodes and individual interviews, all on the Our City Tonight YouTube channel. The Richmond Sentinel, providing news, entertainment, and human interest stories in print and online.